Hi, I'm Anna Klumski, and I'm playing Rosalind Franklin in the new Audible original, Photograph 51. Anna, in a few sentences, tell us what Photograph 51 is about. Oh, Photograph 51 is about the events leading up to discovering the structure of DNA. So women in science has come a long way, but probably not as far as we'd hoped by now. Why do you think this story is so important to tell? The story is, uh, is definitely important to tell for examining the role of women in the history of science, um, examining the role of women in science today, as well as examining the role of women in any workplace. <laughs> I think that Rosalind Franklin sort of has become an unwitting um, feminist icon uh, because of what was seemingly omitted. And it's, it's that age old tale of, we don't get the full story as long as just the men involved are telling it. You know, I think that in a very creative and poetic way, Anna has attempted to fill in some of the blanks, you know, almost, almost uh, um, writing those wrongs in the, in, the, uh, in the limited way possible that we can. Um, and then of course that is where, um, where the poetry of it, it takes over. So Anna, you originally signed on to do this role for the Williamstown Theater Festival live on their stage. Um, as we all know, the pandemic hit and plans changed. What has it been like to sort of reimagine the role for audio? I love being on stage at Williamstown. It is wonderful, it is heaven. It's so fun to get to know um, your ensemble and, um, and I really, really was looking forward to it. However, yes, the world, um, the world sometimes, um, you know, throws you throws you for a loop. And so we learned that there was this alternative to do it on, on Audible instead, which was really something else. I mean, nothing like it. There's This will not be paralleled, I think. Um, this was very different. I still felt like I approached, and we, and we re approached the rehearsal process, um, albeit on Zoom and Chime, very, very similarly to what it's like to do a table um, session for the beginning of when you're starting to do a play. And um, I don't know, there's something sort of pure about it. It was nice. As much as I think it'd be very nice to be on stage. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the recording process. You know, obviously, generally when we think about voiceover work, it's in very controlled environments and, and you know, a highly curated recording booths. What was this process like? Um, yeah, th uh, exactly the opposite. <laughs> um, I mean, it was really something else. And I think that lots of people in my industry, in our industry, are going through this right now. And everybody's really, um, you know, kind of uh, um, co-mingling their crafts in a way. I never thought that I would be in any way um, sound engineering or develop, you know, finding out the best physics for a mic in my closet and um, yeah. thinking about sound uh absorption and, and whatnot. We actually didn't have to be the sound engineers per se at all, thank God. Um, we we have real sound engineers, <laughs> brilliant, and wonderful, very, very uh, skilled sound engineers. They were able to engineer this with like, you know, what, six people recording, um, our director, our playwright listening in and giving direction. And everybody was able to do this uh, from from their own spaces. What do you think people will walk away with when they listen? I mean, metaphysical sense, what they can walk away with, the the mechanism of, of memory and review of one's own life is, is very much uh, a part of this experience and a part of this play. Okay. So um, that's what I walk away with. Um, as well as a lot of really fun information about the history of DNA. <laughs> Thanks so much for being yeah. here today, Anna. We really appreciate it.